Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join us for our championship round 21 review and reaction. Apologies, um, we're a bit early tonight. We'd normally be here about an hour later at seven, but as you can imagine with events unfolding at Ipswich Town, I'm on Blue Monday. Um, tonight, which we're recording at 7.30. So we've gone a little bit earlier. Um, hopefully, we'll still get plenty of people come and join us and get involved in the live comments as we go through each and every game, each and every goal in the championship this week end of matches. Of course, um, if you're watching after the fact, no big deal. We'll put this down in the podcast feed. It'll be on YouTube and you can get your comments in. If you're here right now, do say hello. Let me know you can see me, hear me loudly, clearly. We're going to get into the action imminently. Just say a big thank you to our good friend, Russ. He's been off to Tottenham today, so he's probably not in the best mood. But um, Russ is our fan sponsor over on Patreon. Was a phone now, friend. Currently on loan to the Premier League for a year. Good old Russ. We thank him so much. If you want to get involved, you too can do so over on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. There you go. There it is, ticking along at the bottom. Uh, in the main, though, costs absolutely nothing to give your opinion on the football which we're about to talk about. We want to hear your opinion as well. Get it in the comments. Um, please hit like if you're in the stream now. Helps me out. Helps other people find the channel and get to the stream. And also, if you haven't already, I'm sure you have all, already. 20,000 subscribers. Wow. Is that worth a wow? Wow. There we go. 20,000 subscribers on the channel uh, you love to see. You can also support financially as we go via Super Chat and Super Stickers. Just hit that dollar button uh, right next to where you leave your comments. I'm going to say cheers as well. I'm gonna, we're going to have going to have a glass of red now. To be honest, we're probably going to have most of the rest of the bottle um, through the night. I've got two streams to do. I've already done a video this morning. Already written a thousand words for a website. We've got to get through the day however we see fit. Right, we're going to get to the action. Uh, let's say some highs. Average Jay, Catherine, Jake, Dan, Wayne, uh, QPR Forever, Rovers Chat, Stephen, Sandra, Tom. Um, and I think we're into repeats there. Right, here we go. Here are your score lines for round 21. It was Fulham 1, Bournemouth 1, Coventry 1, West Brom 2. That was the Friday night game and the early kickoff. On Saturday, the 3 p.m.s went Barnsley 1, Huddersfield 1, Blackburn 1, Preston 0, Blackpool 0, Luton 3, Bristol City 1, Derby 0, Cardiff 2, Sheffield United 3, Borough 1, Swans 0, Millwall 3, Birmingham 1, Forest 2, Posh 0, Reading 1, Hull 1, and this afternoon um, in a 2.30 kickoff at the KFP. KPF, excuse me, uh, it was QPR nil Stoke City 2. You can see the running order. We'll go all the way through. Then we're going to do team of the round, goal of the round. If we've got time, we'll do some Q&As. You can ask me about Paul Cook, but there's lots of other stuff of me talking about that on various platforms. So maybe we'll avoid that. And But look, freedom of speech and all that. Ask away. Ask what you like when we get to the Q&A. Right. Let's start at the top. And on Friday night, it was Fulham 1, Bournemouth 1. We've been bigging it up for the longest time. The battle of the top two. And I thought it was a really, really good game. Really, um, really well matched. Really intense. Um, Fulham fans probably quite reasonably are going to argue in the chat. They should have won the game. They probably should have. But it was what it was. And it was intense and a really, really good battle 
that ended 1-1. Get your comments in on this one for Fulham in goal. It was Rodak, Adoy, Adrebio, Reem, Brian, uh, Harrison Reed, Seri, Cabano, Carvalho, Wilson, Mitrovic for Bournemouth. It was Travers in goal. Stacey, Cahill, Cook, Smith, uh, Billing, uh, Lewis Cook. So Steve Cook in defence, Lewis Cook in midfield. Uh, Marconde is a bit of a surprise starter in midfield. Uh, Christy, Solanke and Anthony wasn't quite the shape they've laid out there in my humble opinion. But there we go. Let's not worry about that after the fact. Um, Fulham had the better of the first half. Definitely the last 15 minutes of the first half, even though Dom Solanke had a couple of chances. Don't really want to get too bogged down in penalty shouts or um, referee decisions. Uh, there's plenty of that coming and it gets very boring for poor old me. Um, I get it when it's your team, but I get it times 24, remember? So uh, here is the opening goal. And we always say the freeze frame never does it justice. It really doesn't. What a goal by Bournemouth and Solanke. So clever from the set play. Inside, um, outside, short one, long one. Solanke's gone outside, inside, run in, touch, finish. Bam! A player in form. It's a great goal. And I suspect Marco Silva was saying to the Fulham players at half-time, you're doing good, guys. Do the same in the second half. You're going to win this game. But straight there, and this was very planned, a really good, can we call it a set play from a kickoff by Bournemouth? Excellent stuff. Uh, Fulham knocked, knocked, knocked on the door. I think something like 3.5 on the XG. So they were more than good value for their equaliser. And Rabio heads it in. They're nice and patient. Uh, Kenny puts the cross over in swinger. It's really good movement from Ad Rabio. Christie gets caught. He just runs around the front of him. Uh, glances that one in. Uh, Fulham one, Bournemouth one. There are the numbers which you can see skew heavily in Fulham's favour, don't they? 64 on the possession. 24 shots to eight, seven shots to three on target, 11 corners to three, four big chances to two. And that's probably what Fulham uh, fans will be regretting. The two big chances they did concede. If you wipe that out, um, it's a win for Fulham and on they go. They're still the top two. They're still on two points per game. I really enjoyed it. Let's get your thoughts in the comments. Uh, Stephen, uh, Fulham Bournemouth, a great advert for the championship. Excitement and a draw, the right result, um, I feel. Uh, Colm, bottle was the word. Spent most of the match trying to kick. Battle was the word. Oh, I don't want to get into that, Colm. Look, it, it is what it is. And the game ended in a draw. So whatever happened worked. And I didn't think the referee was terrible. I know some Fulham fans uh, disagree with me. Dave, we should have won, but didn't. We were the better team. But that's football. Um, agree. Uh, Andrew, Parker going defensive early. It's cost us many points over the last few seasons. It's one of the reasons he isn't remembered fondly by a lot of us at Fulham, I can see on the... Uh, yeah, I think in this instance, um, Andrew, it's kind of the right thing to do. He brought Ben Pearson in, didn't he, on 55 minutes, I think. You're away at Fulham, you've got a goal lead. Um, I, I would have done the same, I, I have to say. Else I think um, Fulham were coming out winners in that one. But there we go. The Crash of the Titans ends 1-1. On we go. Uh, Coventry 1, West Brom 2. Get your comments in. Coventry 1, West Brom 2. Uh, really good weekend, actually, for West Brom, then, when you consider that both of the top two drop points, and they got a win. Uh, QPR directly behind them also lost, which we're coming on to in just a minute. Uh, Coventry's home record. Um, how many defeats is that? Now, only a second defeat. Um, Fulham, still only one point more at home than Coventry. But there is a bit of a slip generally from Coventry now. They're down to seventh in the table, three points in the last four games. Even the home form for Cov that had been really, really brilliant, five points in the last five has gone to kind of what we call survival form, a point per game. Get your comments in on this one for Coventry. More. Darbo, McFadden, Rose, Martin Kane, Sheaf Hammer, O'Hare, Godden, and Gilcares. For West Brom, Johnston, Kipre, Bartley, Clark, Townsend, Furlong, uh, Gardner, Hickman, and Moat, Dean Garner, Grant, and Callum Robinson. 
And it was indeed uh, Callum Robinson that got the assist for Carl and Grant on this first goal 20 minutes in. Bit sleepy at the back, wasn't it, from Coventry? I think mean, Darbo is wide asleep there. And uh, Carl and Grant's wide awake. Through he goes. Um, decent stuff by Carl and Grant. Let me just bring up the um, goal scorers charts. Nine for the season for Grant. Um, was some idea that he was a bit of a bust. Went in for 15 million. Didn't really get many goals in the Premier League, but really is adding value back now this season for West Brom. Now, I'm going to get very grumpy about this one. And I'm not going to get grumpy the officials. I'm not. It's very, very hard for them to see this stuff. I might get grumpy at the laws and whatnot. So the cross goes in from the right. The cross takes a deflection. Um, you can see it clearly hits Kip Bray's hand. Then it deflects off McFadzian and goes in. Say what you like. Discuss what you like. Let's go into semantics and wordings and arms in unnatural positions and um, uh, goals happening immediately after a handball and all of that stuff. We just don't want this being a goal, surely, do we? Apologies, West Brom fans, but we can't have the defender, um, Kipre, there stretching to get onto the ball. He can't get his chest or his thigh, and it out comes the hand. Only he knows whether it's deliberate. Obviously. Um, they didn't see it. I don't know what VAR would have said. It then deflects in. I just don't want to see a goal going in, hitting someone's hand, deflecting off. Um, and I I don't um, go down the road of, oh, referees are incompetent, blah, blah, blah. Give them some help. Come on. Um, I know we've got some anti-VAR people that watch, but does it have to be full-on VAR? Could they not launch goal checks? This is what I've started saying now. Surely we can get a screen. We can get goal line tech at Championship Grounds. Can we get the screen at the side of the grounds? And um, the fourth official even checks each goal. If the fourth official raises something, he calls the ref over and then the ref checks. I don't know. Can we not get the screen? That, that to me, shouldn't be a goal. I've got no problem with West Brom. I'm not having a go at the ref or anything. Um, yeah, argue the semantics all day. Oh, Ben, his arm's not in an unnatural position. Um, look, you can either call it deliberate because look at his eyes um, or you can say the wording said um, immediately after a handball, if a goal is scored deliberate or not deliberate, it's disallowed. I don't like it. You can see. No, um, apparently West Brom were good value for the win anyway. So immaterial. But I just want to see the refs get a little bit of help because my inbox is full every week with people moaning about decisions like this and they're all getting chalked off in the Prem for VAR. Anyway, 2-0. Here comes the 2-1 goal. It's McFadden again, actually. Uh, gets up late in the game here. Gets one back. Not enough. Here are the numbers. 65% uh, possession uh, for Coventry, in fact. Although West Brom have been quite like that. Um, 12 shots to 10 for Cov, but 4-3 to three on target for West Brom. I think it's a game of two halves, isn't it? Look at the attack momentum graph up there. Very much a West Brom first half and a Coventry second half. That is telling us, but Coventry didn't quite score early enough. West Brom, are they massively um, convincing? Not yet, but they're still in there and they're six points off now. I know six points is a big gap, but that gap was eight points going into the weekend, wasn't it? So they will be pleased. Coventry slip out of the top six and... Um, they've not just been a top six side. They've been fourth for quite a while, Coventry. So a little bit of a slip off. They've kind of been replaced by Blackburn, I suppose, as such. Beans, QPR and Stoke have been in the conversation for um, a fair wee while. Um, let's have a look and see what you're saying. West Brom on the up. Yep. Um, good weekend for them. Uh, a handy win for West Brom. There we go. Uh, even with the West Brom win, still a decent uh, set of results for the top to. Um, I don't necessarily agree with that, Andrew. The only result that went for the top two was QPR losing, wasn't it? Otherwise, um, the other three playoff teams all won. Um, I, I think big picture, they've built up enough of a gap where a two-point shift for three of the teams doesn't matter. But um, there we go. Uh, after only one win in their last five, this way Coventry dropped off. Well, they are out of the top six now, aren't they? Let's see if they can find their way uh, back in. Stephen, 
Uh, West Brom looked good for the victory up until Cobb scored, but hung on in the end. Uh, all teams get a bit of luck each week. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, it evens itself out, apparently. Um, Andrew, it was a good goal, same as Preston last week. VAR would have ruled, but yeah, agree with that. Um, agree with that. Um, the goal was given, end of, really. No, Stephen, not end of. I'm going to keep whining until they bring VAR in the championship. So certainly not end of for me. I just cannot understand how we've got a system doing one thing in one league. That would rule out these mistakes. And I'm having to hear people whining about these mistakes every week. Help the referees. Help the referees, says I. That's my opinion for what it's worth. On we go. Uh, and we're going to talk about Blackburn 1. Preston nil. Rovers do it again. There's some kind of argument that Rovers are the form team in the division, really, aren't they? Absolutely a terrific run. Um, and they are comfortably now um, in that fourth place uh, spot. They kind of snuck in. But let me just bring up the last um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games there. Yes, there is a very heavy defeat in there, but I'm sure every supporter in the league would take over eight games. Uh, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 19 points. 19 points in the last eight games for uh, Blackburn. Uh, we'd all take a 7-0 in there if we were getting that many points, wouldn't we? But um, there we go. And look, Bournemouth next for Blackburn. Anyway, we are going to talk about uh, their win here over... Uh, Preston, which is the third in a row in the Lancashire Derby. Get your comments in on this one. Uh, there is your Rovers team. Pairs in goal. So no Kaminsky. Lenihan, Van Heck, Wharton, Pickering, Nambe, Rothwell, Travis, Buckley, uh, Kadra, and Ben Brereton, Diaz. For Preston, Iverson, Story, Lindsay, Cunningham, Earl, Ola Sunday, McCann, Whiteman, Brown, Evans and Reese, and guess who's getting the goal in this one? Because he scores every blooming week, doesn't he? What a what a player! What a season! What a turnaround! There he is on the near post. Ben Brereton Diaz um, Kadra with the cross in. It's a really good header, actually. Look how far outside the front post he is, and he bullets that in, and he's just scoring everything this season. Um, now. There was another penalty shout in this one. I thought I had a picture of it, um, but let me have a look. No, I don't. Um, or do I? Hang on a minute. Have I put it in late? No, I haven't. Um, and again, we'll get into exactly the same discussion. I think it's Niambe. Look, it's penalty, isn't it? Um, we've seen plenty um, given on the VAR, arm in unnatural position. It almost now doesn't matter how close the ball comes from, does it? It's all about where the arm is. Is it in an unnatural position? So once again, I do. I hear the complaints. I accept the complaints. It's a bad decision. I think it's a penalty. Uh, look, Preston had one go for him last week, didn't they? Um, and all I would say, give the referees some help. Um, but they didn't get that penalty. And uh, the game ends 1-0. Uh, Preston only one shot on target in... This one, no big chances in the game. So a really tight one turning on the form of the red-hot Chilean Ben Brereton-Diaz. Uh, we said about Blackburn, fantastic form, solidifying now their top six place. They've come from um, a way back, so they're going to have to keep it moving. There's no, no sense of any kind of gap until you look down to Millwall. So Blackburn is six points clear of eighth place, but... Um, right behind them then, look, 35, 34, 33. So that could all change, but brilliant form for Blackburn. And, of course, Ben Brereton. Diaz, who is second uh, to Mitrovic. Mitrovic didn't score this weekend, but uh, Mr. Diaz and Mr. Solanke both did 17 for Brereton, Diaz, and 16 for Solanke. Some very good titles. Preston, uh, up and down, aren't they? They're a bit, a bit streaky. Well, not even streaky, really, because don't really ever get a streak of either kind going. Um, six, seven, eight on the one drawn loss. Uh, well clear of relegation in terms of nine points, but kind of settling into that um, lower third quartile, really just one above the bottom six. Let's have a look at your comments. Um, 
Uh, what are we saying here? Rovers chat, another win for Rovers. Conditions were terrible um, and slightly struggled first half, but got into the second half. That man, Diaz, headed home excellently. Looking forward to the trip to Bournemouth on Saturday. How many hours does it take to get from Blackburn to Bournemouth? Worth! Um, Preston should have got the three points. McAvoy hasn't got any tactics, Dan said. We battered them in the first half. Should have had a penalty when the ball hit. Yeah, I, I agree on the penalty on, on that one. Give the refs some some help. Let them have let them have a replay to look at stuff like that. For God's sake, it's happening um, happening in other divisions. Uh, Blackburn and Stoke, the ones to watch. Um, Paul Mowbray getting carded was a bit of a joke. Um, attacking play cut off by the ref, then the ball given to Preston. Uh, there we go. Um, thank you for no VAR. Um, that being said, was a penalty. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Uh, no surprise, the ref missed it. Uh, referee Ward. Now oh, bless him. Um, there we go. Simon, did we see a lot of handball penalties not given? A couple, a couple, um, put it that way. Ollie, uh, can't work out Preston this year. An Acker nightmare. Think about me. I have to do championship predictions every round, don't I? Goodness me. Um, yeah, hard, hard job calling Preston every time. Uh, this afternoon, it was uh, QPR nil, Stoke two. And we had QPR in as good a form as Blackburn, didn't we, going into um, this one. But Stoke get the win and Blackburn kind of out on their own now um, as the form team kind of in my head. Uh, get your comments in on this one. QPR nil, Stoke two. I believe QPR have been on a very good run of home form as well. It's over. Uh, there are your teams for Rangers. Dieng, Dicky, Dunn, Barbe. Kake Field at wing back? Really? Can anyone confirm that? Uh, Dazelle, Johansson, Chair, Willock, Austin. Four, Stoke, Davies in goal. Wilmot, Bart, Fox. We say it every week, no suitor now. Tim and Smith. Sawyers, Allen, Vrancic, Campbell and Fletcher. And the reason I pronounced Vrancic with such lustre is he's going to have one of those games that uh, we know he can do. He's in brilliant form, Vrancic, in this one. And he's involved in everything, actually, including the penalty against um, Stoke. Brilliant through ball by Vrancic. And um, unless you're a QPR fan, great for all other championship fans to see Tyrese Campbell back fit and doing what he does. That's his second goal since his return. Campbell goes through. Look, gives Dieng the eyes. Dieng dives right. The ball goes left. 1-0 Stoke on just 14 minutes. Golden chance, though. Golden years. Ooh, ooh, bub, bub, bub. Um, I mean, look, <laughs> they've both got their arms all over each other. Uh, Barbe, this is Vrancic and Barbe. Um, there's a nice shirt pull going on in the background as well, actually. Everyone's getting a bit touchy-feely in the box there. Um, Vrancic, the thing he needed to do there was throw himself down as well. Um, uh, but we don't want this to be the game of football. It's who's grappling and who throws him down first. Remember, it always skews against the defending player when there's a double hold, even if both go down. So maybe we just don't hold on in the box. Didn't matter. Look, Charlie Austin. Um, and it's save uh, the ball kind of tip around the post. I don't know whether it gets something of the post as well. Um, Adam Davies, who um, has been given a 10 on the sofa score ranking. So I'm guessing that was not his only save in the game. Um, saves the penalty. And late on in the game, uh, to close things off, 78 minutes, Klukas onto Vrancic. And he's normally um, a left footer, isn't he, Vrancic? But Look at that, uses the player as the guide, curves it in, round into the corner. Worth QPR nil, Stoke two. I'm sure I'm going to get some annoyed QPR fans. Look, big chances four, four to three in Rangers' favour. 24 shots um, in the game. Okay, Stoke had 17, nine to five on target. Um, obviously, look, it's a two-goal win in the end, but... You look at those numbers and think QPR should be on the score sheet. Um, I will reiterate again, look at the sofa score ranking for Adam Davies there, 10. Now, I know people get very emotional about player rankings, but remember, sofa score has every bit of data for every player and a very clever algorithm as well. Um, so let's not say he was perfect, but let's say it was a good day for Davies in goal for Stoke 
City. And it was a good day for Stoke. Look at that. A top, well, it would have been a top seven clash um, going into uh, the game. However, Stoke jump above Coventry and into the playoff spots. Uh, QPR and Stoke, look, they look viable playoff teams, both of them. We think Blackburn, Coventry, hmm, who knows? And then look, Chris Wilder's current club and Chris Wilder's old club in ninth and 10th coming up on the rails, should anybody let them in. Um, so, yeah, let's have a look at your comments um, in this one. Uh, Jay, only QPR's second home loss this season. They have been good at home, haven't they? Um, Field played wing back. Adoma, Wallace, McCallum and Odebajo all injured. Not good, Dave, there. Um, in the wing back spots there. Uh, Stephen, didn't watch this one as both teams beat us this season. <laughs> there we go. Not that you're holding a grudge or anything. Uh, good afternoon from St. Kitts. Welcome, original A-Love Sammy. Uh, Stoke were awesome at the back, said Ollie. Well-deserved three points. Couldn't believe my eyes when Austin missed the penalty. Scuffed penalty. Uh, Thomas missed a one-on-one -on -one after the penalty miss as well. So one of those, a game of missed chances um, for QPR. Stoke get the win. And we are going to move on. Who have we got next? Two, Millwall three, Birmingham City one. Get your comments in on this one. We don't normally have Millwall scoring three or winning by two, do we? Um, a very good day for them, Lions. And I think this says a lot about the championship this season. Uh, Millwall haven't been that great for the past few weeks. They haven't won in the last four. A win here, and they're kind of on the periphery of the playoffs. They're four points off. It's it's up for grabs now, in the words of the great uh, Brian Moore. Get your comments in Millwall 3, Birmingham 1. Uh, Bart in goal for Millwall. Wallace, Cooper, Hutchison, McNamara, Malone, Mitchell, Evans, Wallace, Bradshaw, and a Uh Four Blues, Etheridge in goal, Sanderson, Roberts, Pedersen, Bella, Graham, James, Sunich, McGree, Hogan, and Troy Deeney up the top. Here are the goals. Um, now, this is quite a nicely worked corner in the first instance. Um, and then, is there, am I remembering this correctly? There might be some kind of a lucky bounce or a shot block that goes back to Murray Wallace. Anyway, he slots it in the corner with his left foot for 1 0. And you think Millwall, good set play team, got some big guys. Not necessarily Tom Bradshaw. Sorry, a bit blurry that one. Corner swung in by Scott Malone. And Bradshaw powers the header in there. He's not the biggest, is he? Uh, but he got up there well. What a goal. This is by Troy Deeney. Um, bear this one in mind. I know there's quite a few to choose from on goal of the round. This is an outstanding goal by Deeney. OK, ultimately, they get nothing. But he does this beautiful little nick round the corner kind of half back heel thing. Uh, gets the ball back off of Scott Hogan. And then in... Uh, well, we know if he takes penalties in true Deeney fashion, just lashes it into the back of the net. Brilliant goal. But another good one here, actually. Uh, George Evans, uh, the ball is worked down the right back. It comes across from McNamara. And Evans, nicely, you can see where he's putting that by his body shape, just bends that one into the corner. Good win for Millwall. 3-1 uh, to the Lions. How about that? I think I had this one down as nil-nil. I think I played my nil-nil card on this one in the predictions. What do I know? 35 shots in this game. Uh, four big chances to one for Millwall. 11 corners to five. Nine shots to three on target. Looks like a viable one for Millwall, who, as I suggested, haven't been that great late. But <laughs> you know what? There's a whole load of traffic. Um, there's teams slipping up. There's teams moving down. Uh, Millwall is still in there in eighth. That win just bumps them back up into outsider sort of playoff contention. Can they put a run together? We'll find out. Can Birmingham put a run together? They've had a couple of good little runs, but after four points in their last two, they lose again here. Very inconsistent now, uh, Birmingham, looking to find the formula under Lee Bowyer down there in 16th. 
Uh, let's get some comments um, here in the chat. Jimmy, um, great display by Millwall. Uh, could have been 5 1. Murray Wallace, superb. Moving applause for the young boy. Yeah, six minutes. Yeah, sad story. Um, that one. Uh, yeah, this was the nailed on board draw, wasn't it? Absolutely. Um, Dave, uh, should have been four or five. Ben, great team performance. Billy Mitchell and a phobia work to socks off. Some good finishes in this game. Yeah, Deeney's goal and Evans' goal, really, really good in there. To be fair, Bradshaw's head is very good as well. Uh, very good yesterday. A phobia and Bradders up top look good. Um, Fulham 58, still only the top three have lost less than Mill. They're hard to beat. They are hard to beat, just lack wins um, sometimes. Um, I have to say, what a goal by Dini. Silly goal, wasn't it? Silly, silly goal. Not in keeping with his team's performance, really, yesterday. Was it? Um, on we go. And we are going to talk. Middlesbrough 1, Swansea nil, And here comes the Wilder. Um, back-to-back victories for Wilder now. and. Uh, not to repeat myself and labour the point, but it feels very much like, how high do I want to go with this number? Maybe from even fifth or sixth, right the way through, there's an open door for anybody, and I mean anybody, go down as far as Swansea, Blackpool, we got even just talking about Birmingham. Anyone wants to put a run together, I think they'll be around the playoffs. It seems that type of season where we might get two flying away at the top. We we might get the bottom three drop adrift. I hate to say it because it won't make things that exciting towards the end of the season. But I think we're just going to get an absolute scrap in the middle of the table and everybody is going to beat everybody. And there's definitely a playoff place up for grabs for a surprise long odds team. Anyway, big soliloquy there. Middlesbrough one, Swansea nil, I was supposed to be talking about. Uh, Daniels in goal for Borough, Dyke Steele, Bamba, McNair, Boller, Jones, Crooks, House and Tavernier, Watmore and Spora for Swans, Hamer in goal, Cabango, Norton, Williams, Manning, Laird, Grimes, Downs, Smith, Patterson, Pirro up top. Here is the goal in this one. Have I got the right slide there? Yes, I do. You can see Isaiah Jones um, right in on goal, nearly inside the six-yard box. He's actually played in by Sol Bamba from centre-half. It's a very quick transition. And this is the issue. I know Russ Martin will argue his philosophy. And, you know, that's his prerogative. And it's a pretty convincing argument, to be honest, that he'll do more good than harm. But they have their wing back so high up the pitch. If you do make this type of transition, Bamba, he quickly sidesteps his man. I haven't seen an offside angle um, as the ball's played because Jones is just in from um, the centre-half's pass. Um, he dribbles it toward goal and sticks it in to the back of the net. Um, just before half-time, we've got a yellow card here for Jamie Patterson for simulation. I remember when Ashley Young used to do this. Um, he kind of runs in. He's looking for that penalty, isn't he? Leaves his leg in and then kind of just flollops to the ground there. So, I think, being as everyone's having a pop at refs today, I think referee Davies got that one right. And I think if um, Patterson had stayed on his feet, I think he would have scored as well because he's well round Daniels in the goal. But um, that's it for my pictures and that's it for the goals. Uh, look at the numbers. Probably be a bit annoyed if you're a Swans fan um, in terms of a few of those. Look, 68% possession. 15 shots to five in Swan's favour, five to two on target, uh, five corners apiece. But then all those numbers translate into three big chances to two. So it looks like Borough played the game state well, despite not having possession and despite defending some shots. Sounds like they had the better of the actual high quality chances as opposed to the sheer number that Swan's seems to have created in here. Uh, there's the table. And yeah, again, I'm not going to sound like a broken record, but Middlesbrough, six points in six. And there they are, all of a sudden, in ninth, three places off the playoff, five points off the playoffs. And you think, OK, can you score 10 points in your next five games? Can you be at 39 points from 26 games? How close are you going to be then? 
because I suspect it will be a lot closer than they are now. I think that door will stay open until the final weeks of the season, I have to say. Uh, Swansea, a bit annoying, actually, because they got us all excited, hadn't they? Big peak up to eighth or ninth, I think it was. Well, pretty much where Middlesbrough are now. Big drop down. Then again, if you're a Swans fan, look at the table. 27 points. Uh, Millwall, um, six places higher. I've only got three points more. So for these teams in that big pack, it's all about a consistent run. Um, two wins here and then two defeats won't do. It's about a consistent run. We're looking six to eight games worth of, I don't know, 10, to 10 11, 12 points from six games. And that's what these teams are going to need to sort out this madness in the middle of the division. Frankly, if everyone just keeps beating each other and no one's really consistent, it'll stay like this. It's good fun. Uh, but for you um, supporters of teams wanting to get playoff positions, you need to see a bit more um, consistency, don't you? Uh, Matty, been a while since uh, Borough ground out a 1-0, absolutely. Uh, Andrew, playoff race may end up be more exciting um, than the race for top two. Um, Andrew, you might even be right. The playoff race might be the only thing we're... T this has been a theory that's been discussed now for a couple of weeks on the channel that we might get the top two going away and we might get the bottom three going away as well. We hope not. But yeah, we could literally just be talking about a playoff race. So in that case, long may it continue. Everybody keep beating everybody. Um, there we go. Uh, Jake, another good win. Hopefully that gets us close, closer to the playoffs. Well done, Jake. Well done on getting your Joker prediction right. One of the few people when I make a correct prediction to say well done, other than all the rest of you nerd -ner 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 people who just want to mock me when I get one wrong. That's why I try and dive in and um, mock myself, frankly. If I do it first, then I've got I've got dibs on the mockery. Uh, let's move on. And we're going down to Cardiff. And it was Cardiff 2, Sheffield United 3. Plenty to talk about. In this one, but the main headline, second straight win for Heckingbottom, third straight win for Sheffield United, 10 points in four. And here we go again with the same theory that we just spewed about Millwall and Middlesbrough. It's wide open. It's absolutely wide open. Sheffield United have not been good this season. All of a sudden, 10 points in four games. There they are in 10th place and they're five points off the playoffs, knowing that they're basically a top 10 side if they can um, score six to eight points in the next four games and just keep things moving. Get your comments in on this one. Uh, Steve Morrison continues um, as Cardiff manager, now um, getting into the job. Uh, Smithy's in goal for Steve Morrison and Cardiff. McGuinness, Morrison, Nelson, Giles, NG, Pack, Rules, uh, Davies, young Isaac Davies gets a start, Collins and Mark Harris. For the Blades, Fotheringham, Basham, Egan, Davies, Stevens, Bogle, Norwood, Hurahan, Gibbs White, McGoldrick and Sharp up top. Right, lots and lots of goals in this one. So let's not stand on ceremony. And do you know what? I should have included this one in my goal at the round poll. This is a really, really good goal, actually. Um, who is it who scoops it over the top? Uh, Joe Rules. And so it's a really nice assist and then nice chest down and finish by Mark Harris. Very aesthetically pleasing goal. The first of a couple in this game. But a bit of a game changer here. And yeah, uh, sure, Morrison. Denial of obvious goal scoring opportunity on Billy Sharp. And now Billy Sharp is a beloved character in uh, football. I'm not going to besmirch his good character. But when you see Billy Sharp running through on goal, um, assume the red card is not going to be far away. He's so clever at just getting his body, drawing a foul. Um, who was it earlier in the season in a home game at Bramall Lane? Can't remember. Barnsley? I don't recall. No, they played them away, didn't they? Someone will tell me in the chat. I remember being at Ellen Road in that famous Basham arriving game and uh, Sharp goes through in injury time and I'm like straight away, here comes a red card for the keeper. Lo and behold, he's very, very clever at that. I'm not using any other words um, that people might might not like, but he just knows what he's doing in those positions in terms of drawing the foul, getting the decision. Red card for Morrison. Great goal by Morgan Gibbs-White. Sidesteps 
in and drills that one with the right foot. Gets a nice little bit of swerve away from um, the keeper, Smithies, and it flies into the side net in 1-1. Um, uh, here is Billy Sharp. Sorry, a little bit blurry. Nice passing movement there by the Blades. And it's Gibbs White again, puts it across to Sharp. And then guess who carries the ball all the way up the pitch here? Morgan Gibbs White. Really weird goal this. Because um, McGoldrick puts that through the legs of the first defender, um, who's uh, Nelson, is it? It's a bit blurry. Um, then the second defender slides past it, McGuinness, and it kind of trickles in. It's a weird old goal, this one, but um, I think it might take a little nick off Nelson on the way. And it just kind of like trickles in the corner. A bit of a cringy one if you're a Cardiff fan. It's like, oh no, how has that gone in? 3 1 Blades, but. One more here, uh, McGuinness arriving, powers the... No, he doesn't power the header in, actually, does he? It floats up into the top corner. You can see McGoldrick actually trying to get back on the line. He's jumping on the line. It goes over his head between the crossbar and the lovely balding palette of Dave McGoldrick on the back post. Uh, pretty viable stuff, you have to say, but the red card is obviously a key factor in those numbers uh, because... It was 1-0 to Cardiff at the point the red card comes out. So it's very reasonable to argue that that changed the game in whatever, to whatever extent you want to argue, really. Um, four big chances to two thereafter, you can see, for Sheffield United, 16 shots to seven, eight shots to five. So I don't know. Um, I really don't know how much we read into any of this, to be honest. Um, who have the wins come against? Reading under Jukanovic. Bristol City at home, Cardiff away. I'm just going to reserve judgment. Give me another, give me another ten points in the next four games, and then we'll we'll get excited. But I think we need to see a bit more proof. I think of Sheffield United. It feels too short, a little splurge of points. I think really for us to make any concrete judgments on their appearance of a, a as a top ten side. Uh, Cardiff will be pleased to see that Peterborough lost below them, so no real ground. Uh, lost there in terms of the worst case scenario. Barnsley took a point out of them, but hey, they're not the direct rival yet. And uh, Steve Morrison's good little run there of nine points in four games comes to an end. Uh, let's have a look. Let's see what you guys are saying. Ollie, a uh, daft game this could have ended up with just about any scoreline. Gibbs White was immense. Work to do in defence. But Hecky, who I derided a fortnight ago, has got us playing with intensity. And uh, desire, and they've got to hold on to Gibbs White, haven't they? Uh, for goodness sakes, uh, Sandra Super Blazer after the playoffs. There you go. Um, a Stoke win, Tess, absolutely. Um, great win yesterday. Granted, they had 10 men for a large part, seem to have some momentum now. You think there's a chance Gibbs White gets recalled in January? Um, yeah, he was mad in the match yesterday. Um, I've got nothing more than a hunch, I don't think he will. I think they'll be happy enough for him to do another um, four or five months or whatever it ends up being. Uh, welcome, David. King Billy scores goals. Absolutely. Yes, he does. Um, heck, justifying his 10-year contract. Well, um, yeah, the contract is a long one, isn't it? And he's, the first two games of this very long contract have gone rather well for Mr. Hecking. Bottom. Uh, let's move on. Barnsley won. Huddersfield won. And Poya Aspargi said um, best performance by far for Barnsley. Um, small mercies. They've drawn two games in a row now, so they've stopped losing. But they're in a position as such now, Barnsley, where not that it's desperate yet, but draws aren't a hell of a lot of help. We always call it snail racing um, down the bottom there. And um, wins are all, all important there. If you can stretch, look at what Hull, Reading and... Cardiff all did in that little four-game run. They really um, stretched out, didn't they? So, um, yeah, Barnsley just two wins in 21 games. It's um, not not looking great, is it? But it's not to say there cannot be a trend up. And I say this every time I read out the Barnsley 11. There's good players in there. Collins, Hellick, Anderson, Kitching, Styles, Britton, Palmer, Gomez, Morris, Woodrow, Iseka. Plenty of talent in there um, <clears throat> for a team that's won two in 21. Uh, for Huddersfield, Nichols in goal, Turton, Lees, Colwell, 
Toffolo, Thomas O'Brien, hi, Karoma Campbell and Danny Ward. Let's have a little looky at the goals. And here is Lewis O'Brien in the 33rd minute, slid through by Josh Karoma. A decent little move, this one, and O'Brien finished it off with the left foot. Remember, he was courted by Leeds, I think, in the summer. Good player, O'Brien. They don't Huddersfield last until half time. Uh, two minutes into first half stoppage time. Uh, Helic with the assist, um, the big centre half. I think you can see him at the back of the picture there, number 30. And Carlton Morris in and makes the finish. No goals in the second half in this one. Is Poya Aspargi right? Or is he just um, trying to get a bit of a feel-good uh, moment going um, in his suggestion that uh, this was best performance by far? He may be right. The standard is low, sadly, at Barnsley after a excessively high standard last season, but didn't create a lot, did they? Nobody did, frankly. One big chance apiece. Only two shots on target. They're just very, very goal aren't they? Scored the fewest goals out of any team in the league as well. Huddersfield, it's a little bit of a was quite a steep drop now they're down to 11th i think they'd been in the top six hadn't they huddersfield feels like we've had a fair amount of teams in the top six but yeah sorry there's the there's the table um so huddersfield drop into 11th maybe a bit of a regression to the mean after really nice sort of first 14 15 games it's not been quite so great the last five six seven games has it and barnsley it's just a case of how long how long can you leave this? How long can you let it go before you go on a winning run? Um, I always look at the big signposts. We look at 10 games gone. We look at 10 games to go, don't we? And we look at the halfway point. We are two games away from the halfway point. Round 23 um, will take us into Christmas. Am I right in saying that? Yes, I am. Surely Surely a side eight points adrift at the halfway mark is leaving themselves a hell of a lot to do, aren't they? It's worrying for Barnsley with each passing week. Now, uh, Sean, uh, thank God Morris is back. Team looks stronger in midfield. Uh, take Morris out uh, with, uh, with nothing who looks like scoring. Interesting. Morris does give you running power and some good physicality there, doesn't he? Um, Andrew, just see that many teams uh, Barnsley are going to beat, though. Just draws. Well, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, best performance so far under him, but fear it is too late. And I, Daniel, I agree with you, mate. And I, I know you're a you're a Barnsley fan, um, but we're going to be at game 23 in two games' time. So add, even adding another two draws, that's 15 points from the first half of the season. And you know me. 45 to survive. Always look at that. Maybe lower this, this season. I think it's going to be lower. I do. Um, but so even if they do get two more draws, they're going to need 30 points from the last 23 games. They basically need to then double their output. It's hard. It is hard, isn't it? Um, uh, Barnsley need playoff form for the rest of the season. Realistic, sadly, can't see it. Um, I know where you're coming from, Ollie. It's probably not quite um, playoff form, but it's doubling their output. To, I, actually, to be fair to you, Ollie, you're not you're not far off with my um, projections. If it is going to be um, a 1.5 points per game, that is essentially ninth place form. So, yeah, you're not off it, are you? Um, Barnes from playoffs last season uh, to near rock bottom. Now, this league is savage. Oh, yes, this league. This is England. You're talking to a fan of Ipswich who... Uh, took the manager out, made the wrong call and went from 13th place to uh, 12th place to relegated just like that. Eat you up, chew you up, spit you out the championship. Well, I tell you what, League One's not much more fun as well, but there we go. Uh, let's talk uh, two ex-League One teams, um, Luton a couple of seasons ago and Blackpool last season. And to be fair to Luton, three seasons ago, Luton were in League One. It's still got me in my head as an ex-League One team for some reason. It's got, they come at it from um, from the decade, haven't they? Come up the divisions, Luton. Anyway, I'll stop waffling about history and start talking about this weekend because it was Blackpool nil, Luton Town three. 
big away win for Luton. Neither of these sides, I have to say, have been in particularly great form recently. Um, with all of my caveats I keep saying about the standard of inconsistency in the middle of the table, Luton win, all of a sudden they're in the top half and they're two points off eighth place. That is what we're dealing with at the moment in this, um, I don't know, eighth place to, God, 18th place, that 10 teams. It's all very much of a muchness until someone slices through. There is some sense Middlesbrough and Sheffield United are doing that at the moment. We'll see if they keep up their um, kind of short little burst because that's all anybody's having short burst. Luton will hope they're um, able to put a short burst on. Blackpool dropping down to 15th now. I don't know how many without a win it is. It must be six or seven games now, I would have thought, for uh, Neil Critchley and Blackpool, who were doing fantastically earlier in the season. Um, Critchley lines up with Maxwell, James, Husband, Ekpeteta and Sterling, Wintle and Dougal, uh, Dale, Anderson, Mitchell, Yates, uh, for Luton, Shea in goal, uh, Burke, Naismith, Bradley, Bell, Bree, Campbell, Lansbury, Clark, Adebayo and Mendes Gomez. Every week, I moan at Luton for creating a very high XG and underperforming it. This week, they did the opposite. Very good. 1.6 something on the XG, three goals. Much better in front of goal from Luton. Although, um, the first two goals is down to very good crosses rather than very good finishes because, look, Sonny Bradley's virtually um, was about three yards from goal. Good climb there. Um, forces that one over the line. And Elijah Adebayo on the back post here to nod home the cross from Jordan Clark. Clark is going to get the pick of the goals here. Musquay down the left, cuts that one back. Clark, cushion, side foot volley. Lovely goal, actually. And puts it in for 3-0, I think, in yeah, stoppage time. At the end of the game, nice win for Luton, who were a bit of a pest away from home last season. Let's have a look at the numbers. And um, it's one of those, isn't it, where you look at a lot of the underlying figures and you think Blackpool are hard done to. And then you look at the big chances and you think, OK, in terms of moments created and big moments, they're all with Luton, aren't they? Three big chances to zero. Uh, 65% possession to Blackpool, 16 shots to 12, seven shots to five. But chance quality was very much in um, Luton's favour. And we can oversimplify sometimes. We can overcomplicate sometimes, can't we? But um, Luton, penalty boxes, got it right. Games won and lost in the penalty boxes and they nailed it in this one. Particularly, it looked like uh, with some quick attacks there in the second half. So Luton in 12th. Uh, Blackpool in 15th. Do you know, I will look that up for Blackpool. Oh, no, it's not as bad as I thought. There's back-to-back -back wins, but one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, following that, uh, two points from the last six games. So not great there for the pool. Um, a big fall off in recent times. Let's have a look at your comments um, here. Uh, Andrew. Uh, Fulham have Luton away next week. I genuinely think it's going to be a tough going uh, when they play well. Decent side. Yeah. If you have an off day, they punish you. Tend to um, Luton. Uh, Ollie uh, didn't see this one coming either. Thought it would be much closer. Tough week to call. Glad I don't have to do a prediction show on YouTube. Well, there we go. It's my pleasure to do a prediction show. Doesn't um, stop me from mugging myself off week after week after week. Jay Luton did well. Made five changes. Oh, I didn't realise that. Uh, second clean sheet for Shea. Um, and he started twice in the league. There we go. Maybe a rival for um, Simon Sluger's uh, shirt there. Um, right. How many have we got to go? Three to go. Um, and the next one is Nottingham Forest to Peterborough nil. I think we all went for this one, didn't we? Um, just on the basis of Peterborough's away form. And until Peterborough pick up an away form, or their away form, or some away wins, however you want to word it, um, hopefully with actual grammar, unlike what I just did, um, then we're going to keep seeing away defeats and they're not going to get away from that bottom three. Um, their home record's not good enough to countenance such a dreadful away record now. Ten defeats in 11 for the posh away from home, which means, we've got that number right? Yes, I have. God, lost 10 out of 11. 
that means that um, 13 of their six, 16 points have come at home. So there's too much of a uh, disparity in there um, to be able to get you away from the bottom three. So something's got to give there at Posh. Uh, here are your teams. Uh, Forest ending the run of draws uh, by the way they move up to 13th. Um, can anyone look it up while we're doing? How many games have Forest? I think Forest have only lost one game under Steve Cooper. Am I right? Uh, someone let me know. Uh, Samba in goal for Steve Cooper and Forrest. Spence, Worrell, McKenna, Colback, Yates, Ajada, Johnson, Garner, Zink and Nagel, and Graben. Uh, for Peterborough, Cornell, Knight, Edwards, Butler, Burroughs, Thompson, Grant, Norburn, Taylor, Dembele, and Clark, Harris up top. Um, here are the goals. I'm straining my eyes to find them. Is that the right one? There we go. What a miss by Lewis Graven in the. Um, he's actually get yeah. He's been credited with an assist for this one, but it's like an open goal for Graven, and he kind of scuffed, misses his kick, hits the back, or goes backwards anyway. However, he manages to do it in Ghana. Fortunately for Graven, is behind him, spares his blushes, and sticks it in the back of the net. And here is the um, second goal. I think is he chesting that in? Uh, Ryan Yates, an assist for James Garner on this one uh, as well from the set play. Uh, he just powers it in. Looks like the chest, doesn't it? Uh, powers it into the net and the game goes 2-0 in the last 10 minutes here. Um, looks reasonably viable for Forrest. And you know what a Steve Cooper side is like with a 1-0 lead as well. Game state allows them to do what they need to. Let's just say, but look, 15 shots to 10, only three to two on target, five corners to three, two big chances to one. So the stats themselves are reasonably close, but I suspect, and I wasn't there, I suspect were I at the game, maybe game state sometimes pulls us away from the numbers a little bit, doesn't it? Um, and uh, stops us relying wholly on them, and nor should we, frankly. We watch with our eyes, don't we? Not reading a load of numbers. They're a help, but we shouldn't rely just on them, of course. Forrest in 13th position. Um, let me just bring that up. Uh, so I can see one defeat there um, against uh, Fulham. So Cooper's record, let me add this up, starts... Um, uh, oh, right, let's say Forrest's record without Hewton, so we can add another win on. This is lies, damn lies and statistics. Uh, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15... 16 points from the first one, two, three, four, five, six. So 16 points from six. And then if we turn the page, three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 points from eight, uh, 16 from six, add 11 from eight is 27 from 14. It's good. It's good. It's slowed down, but it is good. And only one defeat in, so that must be, yeah, 14 uh, games since Chris Hewton left. They're not all. Um, Steve Cooper's results there, are they? Um, where's my league table gone? There we go. Uh, for Peterborough, I'm worried about this bottom three. I don't know what I'm more worried about. The top two zooming into the distance of the bottom three getting left behind. Both could happen. I just don't see Cardiff, Reading and Hull, Preston, etc. going slow enough um, combined with those three go, especially Derby with the points deduction, going fast enough for that gap to close up. I don't want it to be boring, but it could be um, it could be a locked bottom three and top two. I know I keep saying it. Um, what else are we saying in here? Yeah, just one defeat to Fulham. Um, just the Fulham hammering. Um, not our greatest ever goal, to be honest. No. There we go. Uh, Graben looked very pleased when Garner stuck it in the back of the net, didn't he? So uh, there you go. Uh, we'll see where where Forrest uh, wind up. Would you be surprised, though, in the end, if Middlesbrough, Sheffield United and Forrest were all somewhere around 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all three of those teams somewhere in that region? I wouldn't be that surprised. Great assist by Graben here. You love to see it. Imagine doing that on purpose, having a complete tap in and just back heeling it behind you. Someone will probably give me an example of a player who was brave enough to do that. Right, two to go. Bristol City one, 
Derby County nil. Bang on the hour mark there. Easy time code for me to write down. Um, a good win for Bristol City. Six points in the last three games for them. You know me. I love me a bit of two points per game. And um, Nigel Pearson's got it across a three-game sample size. He'll hopefully um, be wanting to um, push that envelope a little bit more. Uh, Bristol City, look at that home form. Bristol City, have they really? They've got 10 points in their last four home games. Let me double check that. That's sensational. We did that every week, didn't we? We said, how rubbish Bristol City are at home. Blah, blah, blah. And all of that. Well, can't say that anymore. They're in form, actually. They're one of the best home teams in the league over the last four games. In fact, they are the best home team in the league over the last four games. Uh, Blackburn have got nine points, but no one else has got ten. And Bristol City have. Sensational. Um, there we go. How narratives change. There you go, Jeff. He's saying exactly the same thing. Five pound super chat. I um, think we might have rid ourselves of the dodgy home form. Ten out of the last twelve. Fortress Ashton. It never rains, but it pours. Um, complete opposite. Couldn't win there. Ten points in four games. I hadn't realised that. Um, insanity. Ten points in the last four. Ashton Gate. Fortress. <laughs> Incredible stuff. Um, let's have a look at the numbers and the pictures and everything. Get comments in. Already a few come in on this one. Um, Bentley in goal for Bristol City. Viner, Callas, Atkinson, Odalda, Scott, Backinson, Masengo, Viman, Semenyo. And Martin, playing against one of his 1,000 former clubs. I uh, know it's six, isn't it? Six championship clubs for Chris Martin. Uh, Alsop, Burn, Jagielka, Davies and Forsyth for um, Derby. Thompson, he's um, he was impressive, actually, when I the first time I saw him against QPR, actually. Uh, Bird, Shinny, uh, Ebersele, Lawrence and Jason Knight. Um, nice goal in this one by Alex Scott. Finishes this one really well, actually. Where's my picture then, guys? Is it that one? No, that looks like Reading. That looks like Forrest. Are you telling me I don't have a picture of Alex Scott's goal? That's going to break my heart if I don't. I don't think I've got a picture of Alex Scott's goal. In fact, I don't. My sincere apologies to Mr. Alex Scott. I'll try and describe it because um, he kind of arrives onto it on the edge of the box and really wraps his foot around it and swings it. Really good pace. First time finish into the corner. Lovely goal by Scott for um, Bristol City. Um, apologies. Lack of picture there. Don't know what's gone wrong uh, with that because I definitely watched the goal this morning. Uh, but there we go. Uh, looking at the numbers, well, 67% possession to Derby, but then... Your immediate jump is to zero big chances and one shot on target. So um, maybe good game of cat and mouse played by Bristol City there. Um, you have 67% possession all day long if you're only going to have one shot on target. Um, need to do more with it. Two big chances to zero for Bristol City. Um, reasonably tight other than that. But then again, uh, game state, etc., etc. The goal was scored on 16 minutes, which obviously affords Bristol City that opportunity to ease off a little bit. And if Derby are happy to accrue 67% possession and do precious little with it, then that's not Bristol City's fault, is it? Um, they're in 17th position now and um, switched around, really, haven't they? Um, they were, at one point, the best away team in the division, Bristol City now. They're now having a good home run. It is still all very erratic, isn't it? And up and down and terrible at home to very good at home and very good away to not so good away and all of that. So they're just looking for some consistency in selection and performance and strategy and all of that. Uh, but six points in um, three games. Um, I'm sure Bristol City fans will be happy win-loss win in the next um, three games as well. And they'll likely be closer to the middle of that mad bun fight. Um, Derby, look, we do it every week. Add 21 points on to Derby. Uh, they've got minus four on the goal difference. So they would be above... Hull. So they would still be a bottom six team derby. And I think I've made my point already there. Miles and miles away from safety, 20 points away from safety. And they're a bottom six team by form. 45 to survive, blah, 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 is um, what? They need 44 points essentially from uh, 24 games. You can see the numbers I'm saying. So 
um, yeah, it looks pretty much all done for Derby. And um, after a good little run, um, one point in three games, it's just, if they're going to get anywhere close, they basically need some kind of mad run. They need to like win eight games out of 10 or something. And then we can start to have a conversation. But whilst they're miles off, it feels a little bit, a little bit pointless even discussing it, frankly. Um, but there we go. Um, and here, even game, four unbeaten at home. Never mind, four unbeaten, 10 points. How about that? Uh, look more of an organised unit. Derby didn't offer a threat at all. Uh, Nigel mentioned in his post-match, um, we're better at seeing games out now. You're telling me. Yeah. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, now they're away form and stick. Well, famine or feast, um, isn't it, hey? Uh, Aqua. Uh, City played great first half, limited them to no shots, and only had a position in their own half possession, I think he means there. Uh, second half, just limited to most of these shots. Yeah. Game state is all. If you're going to score after 16 minutes and not concede any chances, you will win. Um, that's a fairly straightforward one and an easy one for Bristol City to process there. And finally, it is Reading, or well, finally for our games, Reading won, Hull won. The mad, magnificent Hull winning streak is over, but still, hey, um, along with Blackburn, in fact. There we go. I should have said that earlier in the show. Uh, Hull are uh, the form team in the division over the past five games. Couldn't get the fifth straight win, Hull. You've let yourselves down there. No, um, obviously Hull have had a lovely little period. And how important, we don't know, will this six-point gap be that they've just put in over those uh, teams in the bottom three who, frankly, I mean, look, Peterborough have scored one point in five and Barnsley have scored two. So they're not going anywhere fast. So that gap is hardly going to be swallowed up like the Rotherhive Tunnel or whatever. Um, here are your teams. Southwood in goal for Reading. Yes, sorry, you should mention Reading are playing um, in this one as well. They've only lost one in five now. Um, points deduction, but um, they are functioning at more like 14th, 15th place, although their goal difference minus six. Uh, yeah, they would be 15th, 16th, um, in fact, without their points deduction. So a little bit more, um, a little bit more cushioned, uh, for Reading. Anyway, Southwood in goal, Rahman, Dan, Dan, uh, Holmes, Yidem, Laurent, Swift, Drinkwater, Halilovic, Deli Bashiru, and Carol up top for did Carol play 90 minutes? You love to see it. Um, Baker, Baxter. Candlestick maker. Uh, Baxter in goal for uh, Hull. Bernard, McLaughlin, Greaves, Longman, Lewis Potter, Smallwood, Doherty, Honeyman, Wilkes and McGinnis. The system, the players that has got that run going for Hull City. Um, it's coming to an end here. And an unlikely spectacular goal here by Thomas Holmes. Um, set play goes in. It's kind of... Um, Nodded down, I think, by Josh Laurent. Spoons up for uh, Holmes, who with a kind of overhead volley um, type thing, wraps that one into the back of the net. Lovely bit of improvisation. Um, this is not one that Luke Southwood's going to like to see. Uh, Malik Wilkes is miles out there. Absolutely miles out. Look, what is he? Well over, uh, over 30 yards for sure there, isn't he? Um, and some. He drills the shot. And the problem for Southwood is... Wilkes is so far out and the shot is so unexpected that um, uh, Southwood's not positioned. He then tries to move and then the shot goes the other side. And he kind of flollops down and it goes through him and he holds his hand up and says, that was rubbish and we all agree and we all move on. Poor old Southwood, let that one go. A couple of penalty calls in this one as well. Again, I don't want to get into it. Give the refs some help for God's sake. Let them have a look at a replay or something because if they did, and I won't look at the foul. Um, the arm is clearly in an... Un I think it's Bernard, isn't it? The arm's in an unnatural position, isn't it? It's way, way out like that. It's a penalty, isn't it? Regardless of the... I know Swift goes down under a challenge. Um, it's very, very easy with the handball ones now with the standard that um, the Premier League, VAR and IFAB have, have set. We know that is totally an unnatural position, don't we? We know anything over the head is an unnatural position as well. So. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I don't expect referees to be able to spot absolutely everything, especially from a diagonal ball. Maybe you should see that one. But can they not have a screen to look at a replay? Really? Really? There we go. Anyway, that's my little soapbox for the day. Um, here are your numbers. Uh, looks like Reading should have won it looking at the numbers, but there you go. Goalkeeping mistake into the bargain as well. No big chances for Hull. Seven shots to two on target. But the way it's going for Hull at the moment, they're not losing, are they? No way, Jose. Um, there you go. Uh, Hull and Reading will be reasonably happy because look, look down below them. It could have been worse. Defeat, defeat, draw, defeat. Nobody took anything out of them. This weekend, I know it's a bit early in the season to be looking at it that way. But when you're outside of the bottom three, that's how you've got to look at it. Did it get closer or did it get further away? Um, and the answer is it actually got further away, um, didn't it? Given um, the relegation line that is given Peterborough's defeat. Let's have a look um, here. Uh, what have we got comments on this? Uh, what a way to score your first ever league goal. Absolutely. Um, if it wasn't for the points penalty, Reading would be right in that pack. They would, actually, wouldn't they? Uh, both penalties for me. Yeah, I I always just pick out one that seems more obvious than the other, but yeah, fine. Um, Alex reminded me of Sheffield Wednesday around a year ago with the penalties. Like, I remember that one. Yeah. The red card in that game as well. Wasn't it a dodgy red card for Sheffield Wednesday? And then the referee didn't give about eight penalties. Yeah. Uh, we'll settle for a point against a very solid Reading side, says Sam. Right. Um, I think we are all good and we can move on and discuss, and you can vote, in fact, our... Team of the round. Have I got sound in both ears? Yes, I do. That sounded a little bit weird as that came through. I think everything's connected. Uh, let me know who your team of the round is. Uh, I will run through the winners. As ever, don't be a wet, sappy fanboy girl and just vote for the team you support. It's a bit lame, isn't it? Come on. You can do better than that. Let's see if we can see the big picture. Uh, so your winners this round... Um, West Brom, uh, Luton, Blackburn, sorry, miss them, uh, Bristol City, Sheffield United, Middlesbrough, Millwall, Forest, and Stoke. Uh, you would argue maybe Stoke and West Brom had the most difficult opponents there, away games at top six teams at time of playing them. Um, Blackburn won a local derby, Luton had the biggest win, good home win for Millwall. Um, honestly, you'd put those in any order, couldn't you? Uh, who's your team of the round? What do we reckon here? Um, uh, let's go here. Uh, Blades, Luton, Stoke, Millwall, Millwall, Luton, Hull, Millwall, Luton, Luton or Millwall, Stoke, Stoke, Luton, Luton, Stoke. It's very close between Luton and Millwall. I think it might just be Luton. Uh, let's go with Luton. Um, so your team of the round is uh, Luton Town and we will move on to another vote. Goal of the round. Now there's loads to choose from this week. Again, please don't just vote for a player that plays for a team you support. Come on, we want to find out what the goal of the round is. Not what your favourite goal scored by your team was this week. I'm not really interested in that. We'll stop doing the poll if that's the case. So please try and think about all the goals that were scored before you decide that some two-yard tapping by the team you support was um, was the goal of the round. I know I bang on about this, but I do these polls all the time. And sometimes it's 99% of people just vote for the team they support. And it all gets a little bit lame. Um, right, you could go for Dominic Solanke. That was a great goal for Bournemouth. Uh, Brereton, Diaz, good header by him. Uh, Vrancic, good goal for Stoke. Uh, some really good goals in the Millwall game. Evans and Deeney's goal was fantastic, wasn't it? Um, you could go for Morgan Gibbs-White of Sheffield United. You could go for May Clark, maybe for Luton. Uh, maybe not. Scott, good goal for Bristol City. Holmes with the like overhead volley thing. 
plenty, plenty to choose from. Uh, let's see what you lot are saying in the chat. Uh, Solanke, Dini, Solanke, White, Solanke, Dini, uh, Clark, Holmes, Dini, Solanke, uh, Dini, Clark, Evans, Gibbs White, Dini. I think it's Dini. Um, and I'm going to make the casting vote here because Dini was my favourite as well. So let's go um, Troy Dini as the goal of the round. Now, guys, it says Q&A on the end there. I've gone an hour and 15 minutes. I don't have time for the Q&A. Um, sadly, um, because I'm now about to jump on the bloody Blue Monday podcast and waffling on. Hey, I've got some um, co uh, host on that one. So thank you everybody for joining me. If you're watching after the fact, get your comments in. If you're listening on the podcast, do come and join us on YouTube for a live show. Um, what's going on on the channel? If you want to hear me talk about Paul Cook and the Ipswich things and whatnot, uh, that'll be down the Blue Monday feed. Uh, that'll be up tomorrow. Um, I'll be back with Dearly Departed uh, tomorrow morning. I think we're doing Behind Enemy Lines tomorrow night. And a few of you have asked me for um, an FA Cup third round draw watch along. So please do um, let me know if you want to see that. And we'll see if we can get that one um, fixed up. Thanks as ever to Russ, our fan sponsor. Um, if you've got any shout outs, stick them in and I'll just click them on the screen over the advert at the end. Because i got to get going. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, that was Championship Round 21. Reviewed over and out from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button. And to be notified every time we upload, ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go and watch another video.